Shall we all rise on our feet and give Jesus a big hand as we receive our Father to take us further in this service? Make it bigger for the Lord this morning. Shall we give thanks for the world? Give thanks for the world. If anything got across to you, lift up your two hands and give God thanks. If you encounter any light by the message of this hour, lift up your two hands and give God thanks. And give God thanks. And give God thanks. Whatever you thank God for multiplies. Whatever you thank God for is perfected. Whatever you thank God for is preserved. Now, give God thanks for the world. Give God thanks for the world. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please get seated. Now, let's have the ushers please make available to everyone in church copies of seven intercession prayer guidelines that will help us engage productively in praying kingdom advancement prayers. Please uh, make available to them a seven in number and you can now fruitfully engage on the prayer altar praying kingdom advancement prayers in the name of Jesus. Be reminded that it is prayer that gives value to your fasting. So engage on the prayer altar. God does not answer prayers, I mean answer fasting. He answers the prayers we pray in a fast. So pray no prayer and that is to no answers. Today, you are closing the service, it's still, the day is still young, you get home on time and spend time because of your busy schedule through the week. Spend time today to press home some issues of interest to you. Remember, you have not because you ask not. He that asketh, not he that wisheth, receive it. He that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, shall the door be opened. Two forces to go along with feed on the world and engage on the prayer altar. If you are doing without physical food, you are doing without spiritual food, you are starving. Spiritual food builds your spirit man to gain control over your body. Amen. Don't forget to get that along with you. We have our responsibility to Engage fervently on the prayer altar for the salvation of the soul of this nation. Prophets have a duty to warn people, warn nations against impending danger. I'm sent as a prophet to the nations and he grants me access to divine confidentials or confidentialities about nations. So, I have this wake-up call to a nation in a state of slumber. Insurgency is spreading across the nation under the guise of Fulani Hearts men. Danger is looming. For example, how many of these killers have been brought to book since their campaign of carnage, death, and destruction began? One may ask. They must have the backing of some invisible powers. A nation-wide crisis or unrest is in the offing. That may be worse than anyone known around the world. Now, tell me what is the morality behind some strangers who are doing their business as cattle rearers overrun your farm with your labor of planting, cultivating, 
are nurturing your, your plant. And graze their cattle over your crops. And you shall lend them, they kill you on top of it. Where are the leaders of thought in Nigeria? Where is the government? And that continued unabated. We are sitting on a keg of gunpowder. There is very volatile reactions from here and there. God spoke to me about this far back in 1992. At a time like this was coming. Plainly written in my diary. Nigeria shall not be destroyed. God shall trouble all the troublers of the progress and peace of this nation. The destiny of our nation has never been under any threat of survival as it is today. People may soon be forced to take laws into their hands. The security apparatus of the nation has obviously failed to defend the lives of these and properties of these poor farmers across the nation. Where we are claiming to curtail Boko Haram onslaught, we are on the other hand sponsoring or abetting the Fulani Hearts men and their murderous acts. Nigeria is a nation at war with herself, no external aggressions our aggressors, no ethnic crisis, no natural disaster, yet we are doing mass barriers. What a nation in a state of slumber. Hear the voice of the Lord through this prophet. The soul of Nigeria is near the point of death. Citizens of this, of, citizens of this nation are fast becoming endangered species. God have mercy. Let me ask this pertinent question that border on the conscience of a nation and her leaders. Is cattle business government business? No. Now, should farmers be killed for full and hard men to live? No. Now, should all the farmers leave their farms today in the fear of full and hard men? As at the last I knew, Nigeria still produces less than 20% of what she eats. And ask me, what is the contribution of hearts men and their cattle business to the GDP of Nigeria? What has come to this country? There is more to this low response from government to addressing this sensitive issue, which is obviously a time bomb. Question number two. Does Nigeria land belong to Fulani Hearts men? No. There has never been this kind of assault on the intelligence of the people like we are having now. Should you allocate my father's land to Fulani Hearts men? No. Never! That would be brutal response. No. No. Are they now the customary land owners of every state, cities, towns, villages, and hamlets in Nigeria? There is danger in the offing. Every community may soon set up their own security system to defend the insurgency of the Fulani Hearts men. Now, question number three or four Can the citizens still trust the security agencies of this nation for their protection? You'll be vulnerable for life. When citizens cannot trust government for security, a state of anarchy is in view. Insurrection may as well be on the way. The 
this largely unchecked aggression of Fulani Hartsman may eventually choke the soul of Nigeria to death. God forbid. Is Nigeria project still working? Without justice, there cannot be peace. You don't step on my toes and say, let's have peace. I said, remove your leg, you're on my toes. He said, no. You can't have peace, you have exchange of blows. Caution. Let politicians be warned. Don't sell out the destinies of men for your ambition. I've been praying, I've changed my prayer level, and praying for the generations of this church. The Lord let this church continue to grow both in my lifetime and in the generations after me. <laughs> True leaders mind the coming generations. Nigeria is rescued. <laughs> let no religious by God say to me, but what's your concern? Wait. By the grace of God, one out of every 150 Nigerians is under my post coverage. One out of every 150 Nigerians. So you are not a leader by elective office. You are a leader by the amount of people, the volume of people that you have responsibility over. I'm answerable to God on what happens to them. I'm answerable to my God on what happens to them. You can't kill their fathers and mothers in the name of being in power. Enough! He said, no. When prophets speak, God confirms it. You have seen God confirm the things I say time and again. These wicked forces will be visited by vengeance. Is our sense of value for human lives as a nation still alive? No. I don't know. What I know is that it's not alive. Today, human lives are now being slain for cartoons without any drastic intervention from relevant security agents. Should men and women and children continue to lay down their lives for cartoons? No. There is no nation on the earth where the defense of cartoons is about the defense for human lives. These killers making away with their murderous arts. They must have the backing of some powers that be. Any right thinking Nigerian will speculate safe. Is Boko Haram not spreading strategically across the nation? How many cows will a full and a man say? to buy an AK-47 rival, which now stands at about 3 million naira per piece. A cow, the fattest, is 180, 200. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> to buy five rifles equals 15 million. All the cattle they have is not up to that. You don't hire security guards in a room and Palo apartment. <laughs> Some fellow supplies these arms. And you cannot tell how much score pies of arms they have. Nigeria is becoming an endangered nation where any group of people may attempt to overrun the nation overnight. Caution, 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 caution to every 
one responsible for the affairs of this nation. Caution. The reason prophets speak so that they don't, it, it does not require the blood of the people from them. God has sent me to warn this nation. A flood of evil is at the door. But for the sake of the elect, God will spare this nation. The wickedness of the wicked will fall on their head. Thank you, Jesus. Nigeria should wake up out of slumber and defend the unity of our great nation or to your tents, O Israel, may be the last resort. God prophetically has unmasked this masquerade so that the fear of who and what may be behind the mask no longer exists. This is not full of any heart man. There are fingers behind the scene. Abetting, promoting, empowering, and supplying the arms. I saw this coming in 1992. I saw it coming in 1992. I saw it coming. I'm not talking about the government, I'm talking about what God showed me about the nation. I saw it coming, I wrote it down. Fearful. But God said, if I can find 50 people in that city, I will save it. For the sake of the elect, Nigeria will not be destroyed. God will destroy everyone out to destroy this nation. Thank you, Father. Therefore, beware every aspersion cast on a prophetic word, usually boomerangs. I will never be partisan till I die. I don't belong to no party. This church has members of every political party therein. I'm a father to all of them. I'm a father to all of them. Amen. But everybody must belong to any party of their choice. Hold a party car. Be part of choosing who looks after your affairs. Compulsorily, this church, everybody must belong, must be a card carrying member of a party of his choice and be part of the process. Without light, darkness will keep harassing. Let these sons of light, these daughters of light, invade every party of their choice and let's play our rightful duty. Amen. What you're talking about? Thank you, Jesus. Enough is enough. He that killeth by the sword, enough is enough. Everyone who has been part of making other children fatherless and motherless, theirs will soon become fatherless and motherless. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet. Your children shall not become fatherless. Fathers here will not become childless. The judgment of God will visit these killers. Their source of supplies shall dry up. The generation of the perpetrators of this evil against innocent Nigerians shall rot away. Those who won't let Nigeria have peace 
God will remove them. The church of Christ in Nigeria shall keep going forward. Peace shall be restored to our streets. Thank you, Father. Lift up your two hands. Give God thanks. You still have hours to pray today. Don't forget to pray for Nigeria. Take responsibility. Flush the devil out of our land. Now, ask the Lord to trouble or that trouble you, wherever they may be. He said, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to leave. Now, God, trouble all my troublers. Trouble them out of existence. Trouble all my troublers. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Your strength shall continue to be renewed. No prayer item of yours shall return void. Everything you demand shall be delivered. This shall be your launching pad into your new dawn era. Nothing shall go down in your life anymore. You never be stranded anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Together let's share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship.